I'd always wanted to get away, leave the chaos of city life behind for a while. So, when my friend Jake invited me on a private boat trip to this isolated island, I jumped at the chance. Clear waters, endless beaches, and no cell service. Just what I needed, a digital detox. We packed light. You know, just the essentials, swimsuits, sunscreen, and way too much beer. We were only supposed to be there for two days. The plan was to swim, fish, and live like kings in our little island paradise. But things didn't exactly go to plan. The first few hours were perfect. We set up camp, cracked open a few drinks, and watched the sunset. But something was off. The island was too quiet. Sure, I wasn't expecting crowds, but there wasn't a single sound. No birds, no insects, just the wind rustling through the trees. Jake noticed it, too, but we brushed it off. We were too caught up in the idea of our little adventure. Who cares if the island was a little spooky, right? It was just the two of us and nature. Or so we thought. By the time night fell, things started to go downhill. Fast. The wind picked up out of nowhere, and dark clouds rolled in. We hadn't even thought to check the weather forecast. We were too busy fantasizing about our island adventure. Within an hour, the peaceful paradise turned into a nightmare. The storm hit with a vengeance. Sheets of rain, howling wind, and waves crashing against the shore like they were trying to drag us out to sea. We scrambled to secure our stuff, but we'd been careless. Everything got soaked, and our small tent was no match for the storm. As the rain poured down, Jake turned to me, eyes wide, and said, We're not leaving this island anytime soon, are we? When the storm finally let up, it became clear we were screwed. Our boat, totally wrecked. The storm had tossed it around like a toy, and now it was half buried in sand and rocks. No way we were getting off this island anytime soon. Jake was freaking out, but I kept it together, for now. We had no way of contacting anyone, no supplies beyond the soaked mess of food we'd brought, and no idea how long it would take before someone realized we were missing. So, we did what anyone would do in that situation. We started looking for shelter, food, and a little hope. The deeper we went into the island, the weirder things got. The silence wasn't just unsettling anymore, it felt wrong. And then, we found it. In the middle of the jungle, tucked away in the thick brush, was a structure. At first, I thought it was just some old fisherman's shack. But as we got closer, I realized it wasn't abandoned. There were signs someone, or something, had been living there. The shack was filled with strange carvings, symbols I'd never seen before. And there were fresh supplies, canned food, jugs of water. Someone had been here recently. Jake wanted to stay, use the place for shelter, but I had a bad feeling about it. Something told me we weren't alone on this island, and I didn't want to find out who, or what, was still around. We managed to get through the first night by staying away from that shack. We built a fire, kept warm, and tried to convince ourselves it was all in our heads. But we couldn't shake the feeling we were being watched. Over the next two days, we scavenged for food and water, staying as far from the jungle as possible. We kept hearing noises at night though. Footsteps, rustling leaves, even whispers. Jake thought it was just the wind, but I wasn't so sure. Whatever was on that island, it didn't want us there. Voiceover, narrating. By the third night, things had gotten worse. The noises had grown louder, closer. We were on edge, jumping at every snap of a twig. We had barely slept, and our nerves were shot. Then, just after midnight, we heard it, the unmistakable sound of someone, or something, moving toward our camp. Jake grabbed a stick, ready to defend us, but I knew it wouldn't matter. Whatever was out there had been waiting for the right moment. And now, it was coming for us. We didn't wait to find out what it was. We ran. Through the jungle, toward the wrecked boat, hoping we could hide or find some way to signal for help. But as we reached the shore, I saw it. A figure, standing by the water, watching us. It was tall, too tall to be human. Its eyes glowed in the dark, and I swear I could hear it whispering my name. We didn't stop running until the sun came up. By some miracle, we found an old raft near the wrecked boat, probably left behind by whoever had been living in that shack. 
We didn't care if it was sturdy or not. We just wanted off that island. The last thing I remember before collapsing from exhaustion was the sight of that figure, standing on the shore, watching us float away. We were rescued a few hours later by a passing fishing boat. They told us we were lucky. If they hadn't found us, we might never have made it back. But even now, I don't feel lucky. I can't stop thinking about that island, the shack, and that figure on the shore. We never found out who, or what, was living there, but I know one thing for sure. Something didn't want us to leave. And even though we escaped, I can still hear the whispers sometimes, late at night, when everything is quiet. Maybe we weren't meant to leave that island after all. So, if you ever find yourself tempted by the idea of a remote island adventure, remember my story. Sometimes, the places that seem the most peaceful hide the darkest secrets. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more stories like this. Until next time, stay safe, and stay away from strange islands.